think that the advances we've made in HIV have been significant, and we, we will continue to try and refine those advances. And the, the ability to have a treatment all in one pill, the ability to find new treatments that could potentially be in low pill, they offer hope to people who are infected for first and second regimens. It's a huge, a, a huge issue to make the scary prospect of being HIV become more manageable. At the same time, I think that it's incredibly important to remember that having this, this advances of, these advances with treatment and the ease of treatment is still not as good as knowing that you're HIV negative. And, and the ability to still take care of yourself in a way that prevents the spread of HIV rather than deal with the ease and the, and, and the improvements in HIV therapy, I still hope we all can remember, that we all can remember that prevention is still the best cure we have going. We need second-line therapies that are cheap and effective and uh, usable in developing countries. And I think uh, exciting news from this conference is that the new uh, formulation of Calitra might be a solution. Drug development takes 5, 10, 15 years. It depends on how fast you find a drug. By the time you're there, most of the time, other drugs come into the market and the bar for innovation goes up. So. Making a breakthrough drug is something where you have to have a vision. Let's find a drug which controls all resistant viruses and, um, and brings people to undetectable. And that was the mission we embarked on 10 years ago. And um, with Resista now, we have our first drug in the market and one to five, hopefully coming soon. HIV is such a daunting challenge. Uh, that the only way that we'll really be able to fight back effectively is for everybody who has resources and expertise to contribute, uh, to collaborate with others, to really um, try to make a difference and to help the people who need help around the world. Well, at the moment we are investigating the use of an immune-based therapy. It's a, a purified protein from bovine thymus, injectable for the patients for a period of 16 injections over a period of eight weeks and the end result is in fact we're looking at viral control but we must realize that this therapy seems to be delayed or the effect the biological effect is delayed with respect to the actual therapy very exciting something very novel and we hope to be able to make use of that during um, structured treatment interruptions i think the important issue is we have 25,000 to 31,000 people here and what we're seeing is not any scientific breakthroughs which you actually don't expect to see at a meeting of this size but we're seeing a real congealing or galvanization of understanding about the importance for the very intensified prevention methodologies that are heterogeneous and, and involve multiple components, not just anything that's unidimensional. It needs to be targeted to the countries in question, targeted to the risk groups, and it needs to be very aggressive. It's very clear if you look at the numbers, even though we are getting more people on therapy, even in the developing world, we are still less than 25% of the people who would need therapy today in the developing world have therapy. And yet, if you look at the people who die from HIV compared to the people who get infected, more people are getting infected. So the epidemic is still doing this, which means we are getting more and more infected people who will ultimately need to be on therapy. That means that prevention is something that we really must jump all over. Our study results provided very encouraging data with regards to safety of oral tenofovir for HIV prevention. And although we did not see a, a statistically significant efficacy result, we are um, very proud to have completed the very first study of oral tenofovir for HIV prevention and that future studies for this oral prevention uh, must be done quickly in order to definitively determine the effectiveness of tenofovir. We know that there are 2.3 million children infected with HIV today. We also know that the minority of those children receive treatment today. At Médecins Sans Frontières, we treat over 4,000 children, but this is far than enough. And what is even less enough is, is that only 2% of those children that we treat are children under the age of one. And this is due to the fact that children infants cannot be diagnosed, that pregnant mothers do not have access to antenatal care services. In Sub-Saharan Africa, we know that less than 10% of the mothers who are infected, or any, any mothers, have access to antenatal care services. So if we cannot identify those mothers who carry the virus and, and give them proper care, 
we will never be able to identify the children who are infected. And without proper tests, and today we don't have proper tests to te test the children who are infected with HIV, we will not be able to know which ch child we will have to take be, be taken care of. That leads to the fact that today, still, over 50% of the children that are born with HIV die before the age of two. This is an unacceptable situation.